And we welcome Baz Warren from the Stranglers to Noise 11. And Baz, I mean, God, you know more about Melbourne than I do. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but I have certainly spent a bit of time there, gone into, gone into a bit of trouble in Melbourne in the past, you know. <laughs> Good trouble, I hasten to add. Well, you um, know the Yarra but, um, River, you know St Kilda, you, you know, you've yeah, pretty yeah, well man, we're, on the we're, geography. Yeah, we're, 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 we're natives almost. Um, we have a, we, the last time we were there, actually, I do believe Black Sabbath were playing, or, or at least Ozzy Osbourne were playing at the Rod Laver. Rod Laver would have been the Black Sabbath tour, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they, and, and, um, and they were there, and we were, we were there on the same weekend. I think some of our crew went along to see them. And, um, yeah, I, we love Melbourne. It's great. It's a great place. Wow, didn't we have a British invasion that weekend then? You did indeed. Uh, you had Brummies and you had Cockneys and you had me from the northeast of England. So, you know, you had, it was all, all bases were covered. Fair enough. Uh, you joined the band, what, 2000? Uh, but you you supported them before that, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Uh, I was in a band from Sunderland, where I'm from, in the north of England, called Small Town Heroes. Uh, and we played with the Stranglers in the UK in 95 and then again in Europe in 97. And... Um, I don't know what it was about me. I guess it was because I played a Fender Telecaster or something, which is the guitar that's widely associated with the band. Um, when they were looking for a guitar player in 2000, um, they uh, got in touch with me. We had, a, we had a mutual acquaintance who'd worked both for us and for them. He got in touch and said, the Stranglers are looking for a guitar player. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Um, would you believe, Paul, you'll never believe this, but I turned it down to start with. Wow. I turned the gig down. I was married to my first wife. Um, we had two small children. I'd been on the road roughly for about eight years, on and off, trying to make the trying to make the grade with the other band. And um, she just asked me, she'd never asked me not to do anything before that I didn't want to do. Um, and uh, she just asked me, please don't go, I've just got your back. Um, we've got a family, and um, so I called them and I said, "I'm, I'm not coming." Um, and they said to me, uh, "Can I ask you why?" I told them, and then I said, "I'll tell you one thing." Though. I said, "If you get stuck, I said, just ring me back because I'll get, I'll get the job. I know the Strangler songs, the blokes. Well, you're a cocky bastard, aren't you? You know." <laughs> um, so uh, that lasted a weekend. That lasted all of a weekend, and I. Um, I realised that it was, in actual fact, what happened was my daughter's school called me and said she wasn't feeling well. Will you come and collect her? So I put headphones on. I didn't even have a car in them days. I put the headphones on and I had four tracks on a mini disc player, which was the medium of the day uh, and the songs that they had given me. And I put my hat on, turned my head into the wind and uh, pressed play and No More Heroes came on and it was loud and proud and I just thought what am I doing I've got to give this I've got to give this a... see I was I mean the see your average man only lives at least 72 I was 36 so I, I was looking at me half my life had gone you know what I mean huh. um, and I thought right one last stab um, and so I rang them back they gave me some money to get the train I got a train down to London I got the gig on the spot 10 days later we were in um, we were in a war zone in Kosovo Playing for the playing for the United Nations troops, um, official secrets act and all of that gubbins. You know we were flying um, in helicopters and shooting automatic weapons and driving in Challenger two tanks. And when I got home, I realised my feet hadn't touched the ground. I got home and I realised shit, I'm in the Stranglers. You know, <laughs> and, uh, it's never stopped from there really. Yeah, and here it is, like two decades later, a great body of work in that time. But, you know, I mean, the last album, uh, Dark Matters, uh, the first album without uh, Jet Black, uh, also the first uh, since the death of uh, Dave Greenfield, it must have been a different dynamic in the studio making that record. It w yeah, well, I mean, it, to be honest with you, Paul, even if Dave had been around, it was different because we were in lockdown. So we were writing and recording from our perspective homes um what happened was we we went out on the road in in that in 2019 and played a slew of new material uh which we always do we road test it and try and iron the creases out of, of as much of it as we can um and when we came off the road in april of that year we went straight into the studio to try and capture it while it was still fresh 
Then we went back on the road again and it just seemed to last for the rest of the year. And then it came to the beginning of 2020 and then lockdown happened. Um, and then we lost Dave, which I'm not ashamed to say was one of the worst times of my life. He was, he was everything. He was, he was a brother. He was an uncle. He was a crazy, wacky, dope smoking, beer drinking nutter. Um, and one of the greatest keyboard players that's ever lived. And uh, we missed him immensely. We didn't know what we were going to do. Um, are we going to? Are we going to keep doing this? And for a for a period, of, there was a very real period where JJ and I thought that we wouldn't continue with the group anymore. Um, um, when the dust settled, um, about two months later, um, and I actually switched my mobile phone back on. I know people say that oh, I switched my phone off. They generally don't. They just they mute it, you know. But I switched my phone off. I couldn't. I couldn't deal with the, the media, the press. There was lots of people. And when we started revisiting the, the demos that we'd made, the music that we'd made with Dave, we realised just how much great stuff he'd put down. Um, and even if we weren't going to gig again, which at that time was a very real possibility, at the very least we can do is finish this album. Um, and so the bits that Dave uh, wasn't around for, I think out of the 11 tracks, Dave's on eight of them. Um, we supplemented it with with the keyboard player, who's also the producer and engineer. Um, we we had for the first time in a long time um, we had a, a different. You know, there was Jed. Well, the first time ever, as you mentioned, Jed Black didn't play, um, and it was all done. A lot of it was done here at home, and JJ Burnell's got a a friend with a studio in the south of France where he lives, and um, so it was all done remotely, and. It just seemed to take forever. Um, but I have to be honest, and there's not often that as musicians you pat yourself on the back, certainly not the Stranglers, um, were as self-deprecating as they come. Um, but when I started hearing the final mixes, I really I really knew that we'd made a good album, you know, um, a really fitting testament to Dave. And it went top three for the first time in first Stranglers album to do that in 38 years. So we were very pleased with it. Well, some great tributes in there too, including the song um, "And If You See Dave," which you've been performing yeah. live, and yeah. uh, also uh, "If Something's Going to Kill Me," it might as well be love. That's a bit of a tribute yeah. to Dave as well, isn't it? it? It is. It is. Yeah, that's a that was a um, that was a strange one that I, I was because I've got a studio here. JJ just he'd written the lyrics and the chord structures, and that was pretty much it. He didn't have anything else really, and. He sent it to me and just said, you know, knock yourself out. It was a beautiful, warm summer's day. And I just remember the arrangement of it and everything came to me in about 10 minutes. And it's still one of my favourites on the record. It, it's got a it's got a very craft work electro feel to it. You know, there's no real drums. There's no real bass. Um, and we, we, you know, that's the way we wanted it. And it came out, came out beautifully, that, that tune. Uh, 2016, Jet Black retires. And, you know, how often do we see of somebody in a band not quitting the band but actually getting to retirement stage? It's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Was it, was there a farewell party for him? Did he get a, get a gold watch? No. <laughs> Jet would never have wanted any fanfare or any nonsense. He just wasn't that kind of gazer. I mean, in actual fact, when we, when we did the Ruby tour, which is 40 years, um, we played... Um, a, a concert with an orchestra at the Royal Albert Hall in London. And I thought that might have been his time to stop. Um, I thought, well, I thought he would, I thought he would announce that he was going to stop. I mean, that's quite a pinnacle in anyone's career, you know, but no, he wouldn't. Um, stubborn old bugger that he was. Um, he was an engine, he had the engine room. And um, I mean, towards the end, we had him come out on stage and play um, some songs with the other drummer um, because we couldn't it, I mean it must have been so hard for him to sit at the side and watch another young upstart fill in his shoes so to speak you know taking his place um, but he did it eventually he did it with grace and dignity as you would have expected Jet to do um, and uh, I mean I spoke to him about three weeks before he died and as usual we just laughed our asses off as we always did about everything 
Um, and he, he wanted to know the, the workings of the band, how's it going, how the songwriting coming along. He was still involved, you know. He was like a talisman, really, like a, like a totem almost, even though he wasn't in the band anymore. So, um, yeah, he was, <laughs> he was a character. He sure, he sure was. Well, you've been with this band for 23 years. The band's been around since uh, the 1970s. What will happen when JJ leaves? Um, I can almost categorically say there won't be a Stranglers. Um, I'm not... Um, I mean, there are quite a few bands around that don't have any original members in them anymore. Um, I've never been um, a supporter of that, if I'm honest. Um, filling Dave Greenfield's big, huge boots was difficult enough. Um, JJ is the last surviving original member, um, or he's the last original member. I mean, Hugh Cornwell's still, still, excuse me, still around. But I think when JJ goes, when he decides to go, and he knows as well, him and I have spoken about this. I'm sure he'll give me the opportunity to carry on. But nah, nah, it, it would just. It wouldn't. It, I mean, you know, it would never. It would just wouldn't be the same. We couldn't do that. I mean, I'm sure you agree with that, do you? Uh, well, you know, I think we're getting to this point now where, uh, you know, like I always think of uh, uh, orchestras, for instance, that have been around for you know a hundred plus years. Because yeah. you know, as somebody yeah, leaves, yeah. somebody comes in, somebody yeah, leaves, somebody yeah. comes in. Okay, okay. And, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think, I think you know, it's like a football team, and you know that the, the, the People come and go. I think when there's not one original surviving member in the band, um, I mean, we'd have to get somebody that would emulate that growling bass sound, and it would just be almost like a tribute band by then. I think. Mm. Um, I know what you mean, and I, and and to I mean, I've got some very good friends in Doctor Feelgood, um, one of whom is from Sunderland, the same town as me. There's not an original member in that band anymore, but some of the guys that are in there have been in there twenty odd years, so. Where'd you draw the line, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you know the DNA of the band, why not continue it? Because well, otherwise some I... covers band is going to do it anyway. <laughs> well, uh, at this moment in time, I couldn't I couldn't envisage being, being in the band without him. Um, you know, him and I are brothers in arms. And, uh, you know, I, I spoke to him yesterday. Um, and um, we're looking forward to seeing each other and starting to rehearse for these European dates that we've got before we come down to see you guys. Mm. The uh, set list, uh, the most recent that I've been looking at, is absolutely uh, stunning. And, you know, you've kind of got a bookends happening with the Black and White album uh, in the last set that I saw from 2022, opening with Toiler of the Sea and ending in Tank. Uh, was that deliberate yeah. to have sort of, uh, you know, Black and White at the top and tail? Uh, of the no, no. Uh, to be honest with you, I never thought of it until you mentioned it there. Um <laughs> It did just Toiler on the Sea is just arguably the greatest opening number that the Stranglers could ever have. Um, and Tank finishes with an explosion that we always aim to crack the plaster in the ceiling of the venue. So after that, where else can you go? You know, um, we might turn it around a little bit. Him and I are gonna we're gonna talk next week about the the set the set list that we're gonna do. Um, the new keyboard player, who is stunning, by the way. I can't wait for you guys to see him. Um, he is outrageously good. He's just like Dave Greenfield as well. He's, he's massively eccentric, wow. very English. Yeah, what's his um, name? Where's he from? His name's Toby, Toby Hounsham. Um, he is, um, he used to be in a band called Rialto. I don't know if you heard of Rialto, they were an English pop group. Um, and recent, in more recent times, he's been playing with Mungo Jerry. Mungo um, Jerry, you're back? Yeah, yeah. Wow. In the summertime when the weather is high, you know. Um, and he was not only a Stranglers fan, but a huge Dave Greenfield um, acolyte, if you like. And um, he studied Dave and he came to an audition. Um, and I'm not ashamed to say that when he started playing, I had to stop. Um, I had to take my guitar off and sit down. We had Dave's old rig with us, um, and I never expected those sounds to come out of that rig ever again, especially not played as beautifully as he did. It took me by surprise. Everybody was saying, are you OK? And first concert we did with him um, in France, what a milestone that was. Uh, 
and now you know he's he's probably done maybe sixty shows with the band. Um, he's properly found his feet, um, and he's a wonderful. I mean, we could, Paul, honest to God, we could not have been luckier. You, we could not have found the the more. I mean, there's quite a few large names mooted. You know, there's a few, but quite a few people wanted to do it. Um, and we got a guy that's virtually unknown, but just puts the rest of them in the shed. And when you see us in Melbourne, you'll you'll see what I mean. You know, it's brilliant. When I do see you in Melbourne, I am going to be bitterly disappointed when I walk out the door if you don't do in the summertime now. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, right? Come backstage after the gig uh, to say hello and have a beer and I'll get Toby to play it. He'll be only too happy to play it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can't wait to see the uh, Stranglers back in Australia. And, uh, you know, the set list is absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how the Dark Matters songs fit in with uh, everything else. It's uh, going to be uh, quite the set. And, uh, you know, just, yeah. just so people aren't fearful that they're going to get too much new album, there is a very lot of a uh, big, big list of songs in the set list, isn't there? Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a blessing and a curse, really, because there's so many great tunes. You can't play them all. Sometimes we rehearse and we look at the clock and realise that we've played for two and a bit hours. Now, I know a lot of people want value for money and, you know, you go and see Bruce Springsteen and all these different people, they just play for hours. I think, you know, you want a tight, concise 90 minutes Hmm. Maybe a hundred minutes. That's about as that's people's thresholds, really. So, um, it's always great fun. We have a lot of a lot of fun picking and choosing the songs. There are some songs, of course, as I'm sure you'll know, that you cannot leave out. Um, but we like to surprise people, and of course, we haven't been down to Australia since we lost Dave. So, um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of dark. Mind. I mean, the, the, you know, we we don't want to play. You, you you're absolutely right. You don't want to play too much of the new album. I know a lot of people do um, go out and just batter people into submission with brand new tunes. You can't do that, really. Mm -hmm. um, but I can guarantee you that there'll be at least three or four, maybe even five from the new from the new album, um, which we've been playing regularly over the yeah. last sort of three, four years. So, yeah, well, the set list I've got here, uh, get a grip on yourselves right up the top. I can't believe you just yeah. that song away at Number two, that's incredible. <laughs> you can say that for an encore. Um, uh, well, skin deep, walk on by. Uh, uh, gee, we've had so many hits in this in in, the, in this country. Peaches, of course. You can't you yeah. can't come here and not play peaches. So no, no, no. They'll they'll be all. Um, I can almost certainly say that all of the stuff that you expect will be there, and some stuff that you don't. Because, you know, we like, I mean, I know that we're of a certain age now and, you know, we've been on the go a long time. It's 50 years next year um, for the Stranglers. Um, and, but, you know, we still don't see ourselves as a, as a, as a, a heritage um, act and all that. We've still got plenty of things to say, which is why we still continue to write and record new music, you know? Yeah. Well, looking forward to seeing you in Australia in April. Uh, Baz Warren from The Stranglers, thanks for joining us here at Noise 11. Paul, an absolute pleasure. Look forward to seeing you.